Ramadan Saleh is an Eritrean worker living in Israel. He ended up there through middlemen. That was years ago, but to this day, his struggles remain the same, with one exception. He can no longer call Eritrea home, having been away for so long. Today, he remains stranded and hopeless in Israel. Welcome to Inside Israel. I'm Maryam Azarcher, and this is Ramadan Saleh's story. Foreign workers in Israel are the most vulnerable to human trafficking due to their misrepresentation in Israeli society and the unhelpful legal status. In October of 2019, Israel reported that there were 215,000 legal foreign workers and 129,000 illegal foreign workers. These workers, due to the nature of Israeli law and unsupportive authorities, are highly vulnerable to labor and sex trafficking in Israel. Back in 2017, Israel decreased the wages for this foreign worker population with the excuse of creating a fund that would be used to later compensate those who voluntarily left Israel. However, this fund's money is being misused and mismanaged that eventually when workers do decide to leave, they complain of receiving much less than what was taken away from them. This mechanism and the fund involved only made workers more vulnerable to trafficking because it reduces their wages. Women were greatly exploited for sex labor due to the economic distress of having their wages decreased. Israeli traffickers have become very sophisticated and creative when luring their targets into trafficking. Some traffickers recruit students from developed and developing countries, inviting them to take part in study programs and student visas, and upon arrival, they are forced into labor, sex trafficking, or both. Please hear our children's cry. Let them stay and live in Israel, the only hope they know. Human beings. The people are protesting in the Israeli capital, Tel Aviv, against planned deportations of potentially thousands of workers. Reports say that the estimated number of caretakers currently residing in Israel is close to 30,000 many of which have given birth to children in Israel. Many of the caretakers in Israel are foreigners. Aside from having to worry about poor working conditions, they are now forced to leave because Tel Aviv is taking away their children to deport them. We are having this demonstration to stop the deportation of the children here in Israel, Filipino children that were born here. Okay, and you said how many years you're here? I am 16 years here. And it's asking the government to give the chance to the children to have their legal status like what they did few years ago. They give it twice, so give it to them. They, they, we have uh, hoping, we have hope that they will listen to us. Many of the foreign workers entered Israel through the middlemen who forced the workers to pay up a large chunk of their paychecks for months. The workers, being the victims of trafficking, have a hard time approaching authorities for help because then they might be treated like the culprit. Ramadan is not the only foreigner in Israel stuck in the situation. Of the over 344,000 foreign workers in Israel, over one-fourth are illegal. This means that they have no documentation and are easily vulnerable to traffickers. Many of them get caught up in an illicit trade that has brought them to Israel over the years. In Eritrea, I to Sudan, to Sudan to Masir, to Masir to Israel. אני באתי לבוא, אבל אין לי כלום שום דבר. יש לי אישה, יש לי ילדים. גם המשכורת לא מספיק. גם אני בן אדם, אין לי שום דבר של עבודה, ניירות. קשה לי. איפה אני הולך? איך אני עובד? מה אני אוכל? מה לעשות לילדים? כל חיים קשה לי. עד עכשיו. כל שנה, כל שנה, אני מחליף עבודה. 
גם יש 20 אחוז יורד ממשכורת שלי, גם שמונה שעות, תשע שעות. למה? גם יש לי ילדים, גם של בית ספר יש, של דירו, של אוכל, קשה לי. 20 אחוז זה יורד. אני משלם למדינה. אני משלם למדינה, לא תעזור לי, מדינה. אפילו זה אסור, לעבודה, זה, נייר, אני, זה יש לי. ילדים שלי גם, גם זה. זה גם אסור לעבודה. לא יודע רשום אסור לעבודה. אני רק חוץ מזה, שטיפה? אני לא יכול לעבוד שום דבר. רק שטיפה, רק הסמרטוט. זה החיים. אין לך בת הרבה עבודה, גם בניין, גם מלון, גם משטפה, גם מטבח, בת הרבה עבודה. אבל למה בגלל שאני סתם אני עייף, להפסיק על העבודה, מתחיל, פעם חולה ילד, פעם חולה אישה, אני הולך מביא ילדים, אני לקח ילדים, זה אני עובד לילה. מי לקח ילדים? מי מחזיר ילדים? אני עובד לילה. אני לא אסתכל אפילו לאישה. אין לה חיים גם עם אישה גם. היא עובדת בבוקר? אני לא אסתכל לילדים. אני לקח ילדים, מחזיר ילדים. אני עובד רק לילה. גם בבית אין גם זה. גם אם אין חיים גם. למה? אני עובד לילה. עבדתי שלוש שנים לילה. אני לא קבלתי שום דבר. חוץ מזה, אני בישראל לא, לא קבלתי שום דבר, זה גם אסור לעבודה, זהו. <laughs> שום דבר. <laughs> תשע שנים יש לי, הגרות לא ראיתי לי מדינה, שום דבר. <laughs> כל בן אדם לא אותו דבר. <laughs> אם אתה עובד שחור, אתה לא, לא מגיע לך ש... שום דבר. לא מגיע לך שום דבר. אם אתה עובד, אם אני עובד שחור, זהו. הוא יגיד לך, אין לך כלום. אתה לעזוב עבודה, אתה עובד במקום אחר, במקום אחר גם אותו דבר. אם יש מסודר, יש מקום מסודר. אם אתה עובד במקום מסודר, יורד לך 20 אחוז. כל בן אדם פה, אתה עובד כמו חמור. אתה עובד. מתי אתה לעזוב עבודה גם אין כבוד? אתה לא מקבל שום דבר. מתי אתה לעזוב עבודה אתה לא מקבל שום דבר. הוא מביא לך משכורת, לא צ'ק גם. הוא יביא לך זמן. מתי אתה להפסיק לעבודה? זהו. הוא גם לא יעזור, לא יעזור אותך שום דבר. אין לך עזרה גם מתי להפסיק לעבודה? לא יעזור לך כולו. באמת בשבת, זה, זה, זה בלאגן גם. Slow. Thanks for staying tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more. The issue of human trafficking is a worldwide phenomenon. Now, according to the UN Refugee Agency, the UNHCR, it's not only foreign workers that are subject to trafficking. In fact, Israeli citizens of Eastern European origin, former USSR citizens, and minorities from the Israeli Arab and Ethiopian Jewish communities are also prone to different types of trafficking. Israeli children, Israeli Arabs, Palestinian women, and girls are vulnerable to sex trafficking in Israel. There are currently over an estimated 3,000 sex trafficking victims in Israel. Traffickers recruit their victims via misleading, fraudulent, or false offers via legitimate employment websites sanctioned by Israeli authorities, according to NGOs. They're also lured into trafficking via social media, including Facebook, forums, dating apps, and chat rooms. Just recently, Rabbi Eshmuel Poritz, an Israeli businessman who divides his time between New York and Jerusalem, is charged with brokering a deal under which a heavily pregnant Israeli woman was flown to New York and her baby removed from her allegedly against her will, then given for adoption to a childless couple who live in Israel. Poritz was arrested earlier this year, along with some of the other suspects, including the attorney of the adopting parents. 
Due to loopholes in the Israeli legal system, the suspects have all since been granted a conditional release from custody. According to Ynet News in Israel, the traffickers are charged $100,000 to $150,000 for each child they trafficked. Activists believe that human trafficking network has been operating in Israel since its inception in 1948. Furthermore, many concerned with the phenomena believe that some traffickers are linked to the elite of the society. Perhaps no case sheds light on this than deceased convicted pedophile Jeffrey Epstein. The Israeli-American citizen had links to the highest echelons of Israeli society. Epstein was accused of sexually abusing dozens of young women. His links included ex-Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak, among other Israeli and Western elites. According to the United Nations, Israel does not impose strict sentences on convicted traffickers, it does not prosecute or convict any forced labor offenders, and traffickers serve lenient sentences. Gilad Atzman joins us from London. Gilad is a jazz saxophonist, a novelist, a political activist, and a writer. Welcome to the show, Mr. Atzman. Now, when we talk about the issue of trafficking in Israel, what exactly are we dealing with here? I think that um, the way to look at it is to accept that uh, Israel regards itself, defines itself as the Jewish state. And the best way uh, to understand this question is to delve into the meaning of Jewishness and then to dig into the notion of chosenness that is basically a crude dismissal of otherness. I think that this is the core of the problem. This is what we are dealing with. That sounds intense. So how long has Israel been dealing with this issue? It was definitely uh, a serious uh, issue um, in the 80s, in the 90s, in the early 2000s. As far as I understand, Israel has been uh, dealing with it. As some argue that there is a serious improvement. I don't know whether to believe the statistics or not. But again, um, Israel is a center for all those kind of activities because it is dismissal with the notion of otherness. It is not just the Palestinians, it is also um, 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 as a slave um, so-called illegal immigrants, um, prostitutions, uh, prostitution coming from the Eastern Bloc, um, ex-USSR uh, and so on and so on. So this issue of trafficking began as a part of the labor industry, right? Why hasn't it been dealt with? In the Jewish universe, there is a clear distinction between the Jew, the Chosen, and the Goy, who is the unchosen. In Israel, this dichotomy, this binary dichotomy is even um, settled, integrated into the law. And the meaning of it is that foreign labor are not second-class citizens they are 12 or 14 or 15 class citizen before them we have this bind we have uh, the, this multi-layered racism within the Israeli society at the top we see the white the Ashkenazi the European the Europeans and then we see the Sephardi Jews, and then the Arab Jews, the Moroccan Jews, and then Yemenite the Jews, and so on and so on. Down below, we see the Ethiopian Jews, who are subject to some horrendous racism within the Jewish society. And then, at the bottom, we see 
the Palestinians and the foreign workers. It is a very racist uh, society and uh, this uh, is an um, issue that we are not um, allowed to deal with uh, but um, <laughs> but uh, we better uh, call a spade a spade. Lastly, is it hard for observers to identify this trend in Israel? Um, it is um, hard uh, to, to identify the demography of um, um, this trade in Israel. I think that it is a general symptom to the point that almost uh, every elder uh, um, Israeli Jew has um, Philippine uh, youngsters who take uh, care of uh, his or and her needs. It is pretty much um, a general issue in Israel. It goes beyond a specific a democ a demography or class. Thanks for that, Mr. Atzman. That was Mr. Gilad Atzman from London. On the streets of the northern city of Haifa, we asked Israelis and foreigners alike a few questions. We started out with this one. Are some people in Israel working with no rights? <laughs> נגיד מגיע לבן אדם יום בחודש של חופש, הם פוחדים כי הם מורידים להם את היום הזה. למשל, דוגמה, את מבינה? כל בן אדם פה בארץ, בישראל, עובד חודש, מקבל יום וחודש חופש. אצלהם הם מפחדים לקחת אותו, הם עובדים כל הזמן. יום שישי, עובדים נגיד ארבע שעות, הם עובדים שמונה שעות. למשל, דוגמה אני נותנת לך. יש כל מיני כאלה מקרים, יש מקרים שלא נותנים להם את הכסף בזמן, שעושים להם בעיות עם כל מיני דברים. שמעתי על הרבה סיפורים. למה את חושבת שזה עדיין נקרא פה בארץ? למה אני חושבת ש... שמה? זה עדיין נקרא פה, הולך ככה. זה, לדעתי זה ניצול של, של בני אדם פשוט. אני רואה אותם אותו דבר כמונו. Because they cry like no holidays, they don't get paid the way they're supposed to be paid, you know, they go to the lawyer to get their, their money. And the lawyer take out some money from them also. That's what I can say about that. Uh, they treat you very bad. You see, it's like you don't know your rights. We can't read Hebrew. We can't, you know, some little obstacles. And if we know our rights, they chase you away. If you try to claim your rights to them, they chase you away. That's the. That's what we are facing. Yeah. We we came here to, you know, to to give a special care to the oldest people, and and we love to do this. We, we really love to do this and what we feel sometimes is well, we, are, we, are, we are not like a servant, you know, we, we are, we, even we have heart, even we are, we are human, even we need uh, rest. Never work in each and every country, there is also uh, and it's very good to be, it must be because even we come to give our serve here, we serve here, we come and we give our service here, we are also human beings. The, if we belong from the other country also, but we are as a human being. So it's our right to get our labor, uh, labor right, it should be labor right. And I have a job for a while, and I still have a job for my money. And he always tells us that he doesn't have to pay us, and that we still have a job for his money, when he will have it. Tim Anderson joins us from Australia. Mr. Anderson is an author, an activist, and a former senior lecturer at the University of Sydney. Good to have you with us, Mr. Anderson. Now you heard our earlier report. What more can you tell us about the Israeli victims of human trafficking? Israeli society is very prone to the use of labor because it's a privileged society. And those who are Jewish Israeli citizens are used to a type of privilege and used to uh, the presence of second-class citizens or third-class citizens. Um, so uh, it's, it's, there's a strong, strong demand for, for example, um, very cheap labor, immigrant labor, and for um, sex workers, and in some of the other areas of human trafficking. Um, on top of that, the government itself is, has been inclined to 
um, bring in immigrants to try and uh, reinforce the numbers of Jewish Israelis there, uh, particularly in the 90s and uh, more recently too, from countries of the former Soviet Union. So you've had, you've seen a big rush of immigration of people who, uh, if they weren't really considered Jewish, uh, there was a big process of conversion going on to try and ensure that the Russians and the other East Europeans were converted into Israeli citizens. Now, in that process, there was a huge um, influx of sex workers and prostitution as well. That sounds intense. So how long has Israel been dealing with this issue? Well, this goes to the history, the recent history of Israel of um, bringing in a lot of um, former citizens, residents of the former Soviet Union countries, and then um, only guaranteeing their citizenship after they'd been a process of, through a process of conversion to Judaism. So in that in-between situation, they were effectively uh, being denied citizenship. You've also seen um, a line of African migration, which is through the Sinai. Um, so uh, the people in these situations, if they wanted to gain citizenship in Israel, they have to go through the conversion process. And um, uh, historically, um, it was a very unregulated system in the 90s. Indeed, Israel was regarded as one of the worst human traffickers in the 90s into the early 2000s. Then they amended their laws um, in 2006 uh, so that the US then gave them a, a clean bill of health, um, as the US tends to do, um, because they had laws against uh, trafficking in slavery and sex prostitution. But since then, there's been uh, the laws have been bypassed effectively. We've seen uh, the emergence of um, illegal ways of keeping this forced labor coming through, keeping the the sex trafficking, some uh, rings for trafficking of babies and of course of human organs, particularly during the uh, during the war and the, the use of uh, hostages and dead bodies and so on. So um, there's been a peculiar history and Israel has, through its privileged culture, has been taking advantage of uh, vulnerable people. Now let's dig deeper, Mr. Anderson. How are the traffickers exploiting the situation and taking the measures into their own hands? There is a particular um, uh, demand in Israel for the adoption of babies. And so there has been a lot of uh, bypassing international laws to um, get babies, effectively kidnap babies from other countries. Um, apparently something to do with the, the lack of available children for parents who wish to adopt within Israel. But again, this is in the context of a privileged society where they look to others to provide um, services that are lacking in their own culture. Well, what allows this to happen? I mean, aren't there laws against this type of work? Well, there's the usual suspects. There's a strong demand there. There are loopholes that um, normal um, criminals, let's say, can do to engage in human trafficking, organ trafficking. Um, uh, but there's also been the involvement of some socially privileged groups like police and religious leaders, rabbis, um, who have been arrested in recent times, um, including in the sex trafficking and the baby trafficking. And of course, the links to the armed groups that Israel has sponsored in Syria, for example, has also uh, linked them up to organ trafficking. So there is a a fairly widespread systematic, but um, under the radar, although there are some prosecutions, of course, that's only the tip of the iceberg. Um, in all of those areas of human trafficking, that's still going on and it's, it's widespread in Israeli society. Thank you for that, Mr. Anderson. That was Tim Anderson from Australia. According to the US Department of State, Israel is a major hub for trafficking. Not only are foreigners vulnerable, but different Israeli classes, mainly the ones at the bottom, are vulnerable as well. Will international observers address the issue before it's too late? And that ends this edition of Inside Israel. Let's hear what you have to say about this. Tweet to me at inside underscore Israel. Until next time.